Uh, just had two fucking massive charter boats just drift on, smash it. 50 knots has come through the anchorage and these two big boats, like they're not little boats, they're big boats, just came over and we're just um, stuck on the front of the bow and uh, on Catalpa and we thought, thought that was it. That was scary. There's two, like, I don't know, 50 ton boats against it. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, it's going to be a mess the outside tomorrow. Like, we had outboards of the tenders of this big um, charter boat that's been all down the side of it. Oh, that was scary. Oh, that's heavy. I was in the dinghy. I felt real helpless. We are an Australian family that made our boat Catalpa our home and set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us in our travels as we share our life on the sea. So the we were just over at a friend's boat having drinks and it's these two big ass boats and they're, uh, they're like side tied. This boat here and there was another boat as well and they were side tied to uh, each other and they just ran into Catalpa and just nearly took us out. We were just sitting over on another boat and the 50 knots has come through the anchorage and these two big boats, like they're not little boats, they're big boats, just came over and we're just um, stuck on the front of the bow and, uh, on Catalpa and we thought, thought that was it. It was pretty scary. I was in the dinghy. Kids are in the dinghy and gnarly. Oh my God. Yeah, those boats are going to end, that big boat's nearly on on the beach. You're going all right. We just had two fucking massive charter boats just drift on, smash us, use our anchor as a bit of a hold. We've got a huge rock behind us. Probably can't see me, but there's a boat right beside me now. He's trying to pull his anchor. We've got like 40 knots of wind plus and gusting and two, two big charter boats out of control. biggest nightmares ever. Oh. It started raining and then Mick kept looking how fast the wind was going. It got up to 50. And then um, Mick looked over and he goes, I think those two boats are heading for your boat. And sure enough, within like minutes, they were on us, eh? And like, yeah, our anchor, I, I think they were even our springer. I've like touched this, like we got, I don't know, it must be 25 mil. I've just hit this with the machete and it's just gone ting, I like the loudest wing. I, I thought it smashed me in the foot actually. It's like bruised all my you foot. Had to, um, I thought you had to cut our anchor. I was spewing, I'm like, oh no. Oh, that was scary. There's two, like, I don't know, 50 ton yeah. boats against us. And um, they wouldn't cut their line because there's rocks behind us and they, they may have pulled us a bit. I think it was just our windlass letting out chain because I'd snapped the springer. And, um, oh, that's heavy. We're just taking two big boats. I don't know if their boats even hold, like the bilge alarm's not going off, I don't think. Um, yeah, we had, oh, it's going to be a mess the outside tomorrow, like we had outboards of the tenders of this big um, charter boat that's been all down the side of us. They wouldn't cut the line, the kids have had to cut it, I had to cut the springer. Um, yeah, and it smashed me in the leg, eh? <laughs> oh, I just went whack and it was like a freaking hammer hitting my leg. Need <laughs> a kiss? Oh my God, that was scary. Oh, that's heavy. I was in the dinghy, I felt real helpless. Thank God, this help is still floating. Oh my God. Oh, that fucking anchor. I didn't know what to do. Uh, that's, that's his rope, that's not the I was expecting to be smashed. Oh. Oh my 
my god, but that's better than what I was imagining. I thought the whole thing was gonna be crumpled. You gotta just say that. You gotta do it again. That's not really Ah, yeah, that's alright. They started backing up on me. I thought he had you. I thought he had you. going on the rocks. I found there could be better damages under the hull though because their line, well I suppose it's only rope, not yeah, chain. Yeah, that wasn't chain. Yeah. Yeah mate, I thought it was a fair pretty, fair pretty good conclusion mate. Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, hop on. It's, like, it's time to leave Benoa Harbour. Pretty good. She's probably okay. going to be a metre underneath. The power of the rock now. How's your beer going down? There you go. Try that one, Bill. You wait for the rest of his life. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a spare hand, haven't you? Yeah. Tower yeah. 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 He's still fighting. Still fighting. <laughs> Straight down the hatch. Does that look like he was starting to head for you guys then? Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like going on. Oh. Yeah, that's what yeah. I Because as I was, I was pushing mine, I'm like, he's going even further. I'm like, oh. oh man. So it's the morning after. It's pretty calm in here. I just looked out the window and the two boats that ran into us last night, they, they went out of the harbour because they couldn't find anywhere to anchor but I just noticed that they're both coming in now. That one there. And that one there. So both those boats were rafted up and, and anchored just in front of where Mick and Beth's boat is, where Sight is, and uh, that's what drifted onto us last night. So both of those boats together were on our anchor. We're pressing up and hitting Catalpa back and forth. We haven't looked at the damage during the day yet, but um, they're not small boats. Very dramatic night, and uh, I've got no footage of it. But yeah, here they are, coming back in to find an anchor. Hopefully nowhere near us, please. Boys are. And look what's just behind us, these rocks. That, that boat last night was about oh, metres from hitting those rocks. Our anchor actually saved their boat for sure. See how big that boat is? There was two of them. Two of them rafted up on Catalpa. Crazy was last night. Our anchor, windless, I think is all going to be bent. Um, there will be like a couple hundred tonne each one of those things and we had probably 400 tonne of boat hanging off our anchor. So, I'm not sure if our windlass is going to be completely bent and broken. I know the front of the boat's all twisted and bent. Our staunchions are all pushed in. Um, at one stage there, we were holding the two boats, um, and Catalpa was getting pulled underneath them. Um, we all thought that was it. We thought Catalpa was going down. We were lacking a bit of footage. I didn't really want everyone on the boat. Um, just because, yeah, we thought it was gonna, we were going to lose up. Uh, they were fouled up on our line. And um, uh, a lot of damage down the side of the boat, a lot of damage on the staunchions, a lot of damage on the nose cone, uh, windless, not sure. Chain didn't snap, I thought it was going to. We've lost our springer. <sighs> we're just lucky we didn't lose the boat and no one was hurt. Yeah, super grateful for that. This boat was fiberglass, we would have sunk last night. Yeah, 100%. We had like four outboards smashing through. I think we broke all their outboards. The pressure of the boats in between us and that snapped all the legs of their outbo outboards off. One of their lines go under the boat and I felt it lift up Catalpa. Pretty much lifting up 20 ton what we are. Yeah, behind the side behind. and then behind you also. Because too dangerous for us. Because without these two anchor, we always moving and always yeah, okay. yeah, like last night. We already stuck on that side. We haven't looked yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. We haven't looked yet. Like he's just he's just saying for us to go on, like move there, and they will be behind all of us. Tugboat Bella's back. How's your morning swim? Yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you like to run. I do. <laughs> Get out quickly. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to attempt to move. We've got no steering. 
Lee's gone down, he's gonna put the engine on and uh, Bella and Matt and these guys are gonna tugboat us over to somewhere safe and these guys are gonna anchor behind us, so just in case the winds come back tonight. We've got an engine, uh, we've got tenders, they want us to move for our safety, which I think is a good idea. Uh, we're just gonna have to sort of move ourselves around with the tenders and try and anchor in a better spot. The boys straightened the bow roller as much as they could to get the anchor up. Anchor's coming up, so that's a kind of good sign. Um, just moving, I've got the kids on either side up the front because I've got no, the rudder's just, I don't know if it's broken or bent. Anchor winch is bent. Um, one moment. Bella, just a little bit more. I've got Bella pushing. Um, I've got forward reverse, that's about all I got. Um, we just got to move because that boat you can see beside us. Uh, there was two of those that ran into us. Um, they're very apologetic and it's not their fault. It's way it is on boats and weather, but um, their bosses are going to talk to us soon and uh, within the next day or so and I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. A little bit more Bella. Living this way is challenging, so let's not sugarcoat it. Life on a boat can not always be fun, but what makes a difference in crappy situations like this one is the people you have around you. Thank goodness for our mates on Nalakai and site. Having you guys with us made our night and the next few days a whole lot better. Um, the only other option was to dump my chain, which I couldn't do because I've got it shackled on, yeah. which is probably another lesson to have a line there so right. you can cut it if you need to. I will actually do that. Yeah. Because that's, um, yeah, I didn't, never yeah. thought of it like that, but yeah. Oh, it's not worst case. I could always get the grinder and just cut it, but in a situation like that, it needs to be done like that. Get bang, like, and then the front come up, and I thought, yes, we're free, and a bit of chain come out, and then I felt it pull the start pulling me in again towards them. I was like, oh no, we've got to lose that back line, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't let it go. Fully bent up. I think this boat's no longer usable, so it's a write-off. So. Uh, Are we having insurance? And this what happened. Yeah, insurance. We oh, can just yeah. get a new boat. Insurance will cover this one for sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 We've got to move again. Power master's come over. Um, we're not over enough, so you know, because it's real easy to move without your rudder. Just a little bit this way. Matt kindly jumped in the water with his hooker to see if the rudder was damaged. Wait. Yeah, he's moved it. it just went. Whoop. Okay, he's like three quarts, like that. Yeah. Okay. Just hold on, I'll see if I can turn it. She's just tight though. I think that's, hold on. Yeah, I'm full lock that way, I think. That's full turn both ways. I've got, I've got steering though. It's just when I go out <laughs> wide, like I can turn. Does it look like your rudder post can go down? It's risen a bit? Oh, yeah, that's, bit. We can't yeah. tell. No, I can't tell. Other way, that's gone real loose now. I don't get that, that's free as anything now. Well, that's a win. We seem to have steering again. The rudder just seemed to be jammed. Thanks, Matt, for opting to get in that gross harbour water to help. All the boats were anchored again and Lee got to work fixing the damage on the hull. It's a little bit sore, Taupa. Try and put a fixing in there. Alpha, hey? This old girl's seen better days. I wish the bigger boats had stopped picking on her. Pretty tough of all the boats to run into. She probably held up the best. Hey? Yeah. It wasn't those rails, but it wouldn't have been that bad. Oh, Dory's a bit dirty. You're trying to make Dory concrete too. So 
today we went to immigration. Um, it was a bit of a fail. We got there and the documents weren't ready for us to have our photos taken. So we contacted our sponsor and turns out we have to go back Monday. It's Friday. Anyway, that's fine. We came back and the owners of the boats that ran into us uh, a couple of days ago came over. They're super nice, super apologetic and um, couldn't believe actually what had happened. So um, they're very embarrassed that their boats had done damage to our boat and offering to help in any which way. And so they're sending over a guide to look at our windlass. The biggest thing we're worried about at the moment is our anchor, anchor winch. Um, we're not sure that there probably is a lot of internal damage and you can't see that above. We don't want to leave here, go up to Raja Ampa and then, you know, our windlass stops working. So Lee's pulling it apart right now as we speak. The boat is an absolute mess. We have just been, yeah, everything's been a bit of a whirlwind since the boats ran into us the other night. So today we're going to clean up, get into life again. We'll see how we go. We've got the weekend and then Monday, hopefully our visas are ready. It's, it'll be two weeks on Monday since we tried to get our extension so fingers crossed everything goes to plan and then we can head off and leave Bali because <laughs> we've been here long enough and uh it's time for new adventures guys all right let's go see what Lee is doing up the front we'll show you what uh, the anchor winch looks like the windlass and see if it's fixable or not let's look uh I'm a little concerned um, as we put it on there's actually a bend in the um, windlass we had from what we gather from now after talking to the owner over 200 tons plus our vessel pretty much swinging on the windlass because our time when we were getting sucked under the boat we had to cut our springer and then obviously the weight went onto the windlass and in doing so has bent the shaft and my concern is that it's going to, because it's not running square and straight and aligned, it's going to wear our windlass out a lot quicker than it would be. And we want to go to Raja Rampat and it's a lot of deep anchoring and that's where it's going to go. And we don't want to be in deep anchorage areas without a windlass. We'll see what we do here. You can sort of see the, the actual gypsies moving side to side. You can see it's been bent. But mechanically, when things aren't aligned and running on gears and all the rest of it, and who knows if even all the gears are okay, um, it's just a ticking time bomb to uh, before it fails. And it's just such an important um, bit of gear on a boat because to lift up 30, 40, 50, 80, whatever it is, meters of chain is really hard work and um, dangerous. So. Yeah, got a guy coming out to have a look at it. He may think about either rebuilding a shaft or trying to, I don't know. I would feel a lot more confident just with another windlass, to be honest, just because of the importance of it. And he's hooked up his own little contraption here to heel over Catalpa so that he can get out of the water, the, put the water line out of the water. And I think it's working a treat. Does it fall out? He's got some uh, a foot of waterline to work with. Instead of being right on the edge, it was a bit difficult to to get to it. So he's so clever. So we'll go show you where we're talking about. Before it was just splashing up in the water, so the water was kind of trickling up. So it was it wasn't underwater, but it was um, too wet to work, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just lifted it up enough now. I'll be able to. Um... You can clean the waterline while you're at it. Get Sarah to clean the water line <laughs> once I'm finished and um, get that patched up. Look at her, she's been in a battle. I'll we'll give you a little bit of a rundown here. So they've pretty much worked their whole way down the side of our boat. Um, they ripped our staunchions out, which I've set back in now. We've epoxied up all the bow where they've um, hit. There's a little bit of stainless work. You can see the rails bent up. Um, the front nose cone's twisted. A few more little battle marks down here, not as bad. Um, so there's three main things. There's all the damage, obviously. So there's the painting, filling and fairing and painting. And then um, we're going to look at just tidying up the rails a bit. We're not going to go overboard. It's an old boat. It bends and twists as it was anyway. One main bit of rail's got to be cut out and then a few welds where they've cracked will fix up. 
and then uh, we're just not confident in our old windlass. The windlass has been bent, so it goes like this now. So we are wanting a new windlass because it's one of those things that you really do depend on. Up in road rump up before we know it. So yeah, righto. Get back Let's to go. it. Get back to it, mate. Uh, you want to put that camera down and then get me the lead. So we're going over to um, the boat site for dinner. We're having a pizza night. Um, last time we went over there though, we had two big boats like run into us. So <laughs> hopefully tonight isn't as eventful as that night. But we're going to go hang out and eat pizza. Again, thank you to these beautiful humans for your help and friendship. One thing is very true, Yachties are incredible people and we are very grateful to meet people on our journey that have hearts of gold. This is just another story to add to our tales of our life on the sea. We're on the last step, he's doing the final coat of uh, painting. One job out of the road, just got to get to the rails now. That's it, it's all painted up, back intact. I know what you're saying, no need, no explaining You're making me shake and shiver so You're shining your shoes, but hey, I got news I ain't falling for all of that glitter